transitioning from legacy standards to our uh, college career ready standards uh, took has has been about a five year process actually. Our um, science committee, our science task force, started right away in 2013 when NGSS was first adopted. And we just started unwrapping and unpacking standards and trying to understand, first of all, three-dimensionality. That was so different. And then just what is it that students need to know and be able to do in order to demonstrate um, proficiency in these standards. And so, gosh, several years of that, we would move forward just to go back again and then move forward to go back again and finally got to a point where we were ready to implement. So again, we searched for you know, an instructional resource that we felt would best meet our needs. And so this is our second year of implementation. And last year, a lot of PD, a lot of um, time spent on just trying to understand what these standards are about and kind of learning as we go through day-to-day through, uh, -day lesson planning and day-to-day -day seeing what the students are doing so that this year, now, it's, it's connecting, it's making sense, we're seeing great things and the teachers are able to kind of breathe again um, and excited about how we're, we're just going to keep getting better and better. Grand Island, we say, was a district ahead of the state. They adopted the national model, Next Generation Science Standards, before Nebraska had adopted new science, or revised our science standards. So they had gone down this path and done a lot of learning um, and, and were ahead of the rest of the state in terms of looking at instructional materials, what they were going to use in the classrooms. Um, I would definitely say that Grand Island Public Schools puts a major emphasis on professional development. And when we started talking about NGSS and, and we talked about the three dimensions of science, we had specific training on that at our grade level. And they really tried to make sure that we had a good understanding of what it all looked like and how that all tied together so we could be better teachers and the kids could, in the end, understand science better and really have a good foundation for their future in science. So. We have a lot of support here, which helps because, you know, with being an elementary teacher, you're not just an expert in one area. You know, I can't just focus on science because there's all the other content areas. So it's nice to have that support so they can help me become a better teacher because there are so many different things to focus on. And I feel like you have to kind of be an expert in multiple areas. So um, that is one thing that our district is really good about is professional development to make sure we feel confident in what we're doing. And so I do feel like over the last few years, there's been a shift in the way we teach and more emphasis on critical thinking and evidence and, and really getting to um, a higher level than just retrieval, really trying to get kids to process and critically think. The professional learning needs to happen at the um, administrative and district level as well. Um, Teaching science is, again, different and needs to be different than it was. So, for instance, in our district, um, following Marzano's instructional model, um, having these clear learning targets that state exactly what it is that students are supposed to know and be able to do by the end of the period kind of contradicts a little bit this idea of um, students figuring out these things. And so everything from just how the learning target is stated to um, an instructional model of I do, we do, you do doesn't always fit with science instruction. Um, understanding this three-dimensionality so I know that, that principals can't be experts, deep experts in every content area, but they do have to have some understanding of these new standards and these, these shifts that, that are called for 
because they are the instructional leaders for their teachers. They're the evaluators. And so um, that, that PD needs to happen at that administrative level as well. It's not necessarily new, but I feel like this year our district in particular has put a lot of focus on teaming and those cooperative group roles to make sure that everybody always has something that is keeping them focused and um, making them productive. And so this year we spent a lot, of, a lot of time on that. And I've seen a huge difference. It's not just in science, it's really in every area that if you have roles for kids and they know what's expected of them, they rise to that challenge and they'll meet that challenge. And it's less intimidating for them because they know, okay, here's what's expected of me, and my team knows what's it's what's expected of me, and so you just get better quality work out of them. So it's been great. It's really helped in all areas of the classroom. So at first, it was hard for me to have a new way of thinking, but now that I do it this way, I like it this way, and it's the new normal. And I really am happy that this is the way we do it now. Um, it does take a little more thought because you're looking at, you know, the big picture and then, you know, working your way back into smaller pieces. But it's made me a better teacher because I feel like now I know exactly where I'm headed and then I can have a solid plan on how to help my kids get there. So even though it might take a little more thinking in the beginning, um, as you're going through the process day by day, that part is actually easier. Before we really just kind of used our curriculum as our guide and now we really use the standards as our guide. So the curriculum, we always have great resources here. So, you know, usually what we need is in there, but we really focus on, okay, here's the standards we've got to know in third grade because we're preparing them for fourth grade and fifth grade and we're building those foundational skills. So for us, it's really looking at, okay, we've got to make sure we meet all of these standards and how are we going to do that and how are we going to use our resources to really get us there so that way we're doing our part to help those kids be successful and by the time they get to middle school, they'll have a great foundation of all those different science concepts and hopefully it'll make you know, science more enjoyable for them in middle school and high school too. We were very fortunate here in Grand Island that we were we were at a at a place where um, our our school board, our stakeholders, were able to support science instruction by uh, going out and finding a resource, a, a a quality instructional resource. It was tough because we knew that we had non-negotiables, that this resource had to be uh, implementing the three dimensions. Students had to be figuring out phenomena, and they had to engage in these storylines, and really there wasn't a lot out there uh, that fit all those criteria, and we so very fortunately found a, a very high quality instructional resource that uh, in fact, of all the middle school resources that were reviewed by Ed Reports, uh, this resource is the only one that scored greens or met the criteria in all areas. Um, there's not a lot yet. It's happening. There are a lot of places around the nation that are even um, uh, developing these open ed resources that that to little or no cost at all the districts. Uh, we were just ready. We were there uh, faster than the rest of the state, so we needed something now. And very happy with what we found. So in the past, I felt like it was very surface level understanding. You know, I could give them some information and they could, you know, knowledge retrieval, just, you know, give me the answer back. And that was really it. And yeah, they had a general understanding, but could they critically think, could they apply that to another situation? Probably not. And I feel like now because they have to work through it and they have that productive struggle where I don't jump in and, and rescue them. I give them the information they need and then they have to think it through and they have to really use those you know, engineering practices to, to get them through and to process the material. And, and um, I feel like they just do a lot better job of developing a deeper understanding than they did in previous years and before the new standards. Um, so we're living, we're, we're living in the world of Nebraska's College and Career Ready Science Standards, but we're assessing in the old um, 
legacy standards. So that piece is a little difficult. However, we do give MAP tests, um, fall, winter, and spring. And we have seen some very exciting things with science. In fact, our elementary science has just, um, it's blowing things away in how the students are um, performing and demonstrating their understanding. Okay, so what we've seen um, assessment-wise across the district, we look for um, achievement and we look for growth. And in science, we're seeing both. We're seeing high achievement, high growth in, in many cases. Um, other areas, of course, we look for growth and we look for achievement. Uh, we've seen, we see places with growth and we can't, I can't say for certain it's as a result of science instruction, but I do know that these new standards are very supportive of literacy and math, and I do feel like there's gonna be some sort of relationship there. For me, teaching is just love of kids and learning, and so I feel like for teachers, I know that it can be really overwhelming, but if you just keep going back to these kids and how much they they love to learn and how much they wanna know about the world, that if you can keep your focus on that, and just give your best every day, that's really all, that's all you can do. You know, it's just your best. And those kids will appreciate everything you do for them. And they're gonna know that you care and you want them to be successful and you'll do whatever you can to, to get them there. But I just think focusing on, on those kids and, and the joy they bring to your life and, and how thankful I am, you know, to be part of their lives. So.